Day two. We didn't actually have all day yesterday and we're kind of getting a late start today. It's, on, it's 10 o'clock already. Uh, we had a few other things we did this morning. Pick up material, this, that, and the other. But uh, so yeah, yesterday was a little bit of a short day. I think we had about six hours um, with Paul and I, and it was a small area. So Paul did a lot of it. I just did like cleaning up, pulling the stuff out. Um, day two, let's go. Day two. What we got to yesterday, got it tore out. Basically, we still have some tearing out underneath these uh, walls. We're gonna tear that out underneath that wall. Now we're gonna come in here and start reframing. It's had a chance to dry up a little bit. Um, I wanna do some framing uh, so that the um, new plywood can be put back down. And I always do the outside walls and everything. It closes in the gap so you don't have airspace. After we get this floor put down today, and we're, we're gonna start tearing this out. And I'd start tearing this out if I'd have known we were gonna have to, but we didn't know that we were gonna tear this out until we got this tore out. And then this stuff has to be moved because we didn't expect this. And it's kind of a little dangerous trying to cut that corner with nothing to stand on. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back first. Putting this back, framing for this doorway, framing for that doorway, removing the old garbage that's underneath that wall. <coughs> we'll probably put a slide another piece literally under that whole thing after we frame it all in. And then join it on the outsides. We'll see how that goes when we get to it. This can be eliminated because they do not use that anymore. And they actually have somebody coming out here to um, look at redoing the heating and air system on this place. So they'll if they do it then they'll put a brand new unit that means getting rid of the underbelly redoing it and then having to redo the underbelly again so that's what they're going to do we're going to fix this up because this does need to be re insulated we had animal issues back there in the corner and not to mention the animals have walked on this stuff crawled around on this stuff pooped in this stuff it's all over the place uh, that's what you're going to have under your house if you don't secure under your house animals will get in when they ran the new sewer line here, they did not fix the underbelly. Therefore, animals were able to get in freely, not to mention they can make their own holes. So, yeah, I never recommend your underbelly being laid down like that and, and the floor exposed. So, we're going to get to work on this. See you in a minute. I'm working on it as you move doesn't make sense It's going to block all that air from being able to come in past that plywood. You put two of them in there. You already put one. He just screwed one down in the top side of it. I'm going to take his hammer and pull it up to the floor joist where it goes and then I'll screw it in tight. The other one. how you do blocking since I didn't show you the first one I'll show you the first one on this one block number one up against the outside band up as far as you can get it screw it into the outside band two and a half inch screws exterior wood screws I use 
use the star bits because they don't slip like the uh, Phillips. When you put that next block on top of that, you're always going to want to make sure that you come up to the top of your floor joist that you're going to screw your plywood to. You don't want to be above it. You don't want to be below it. He screwed that right into the double. Mm -hmm. yep. And I got to pick this side up. Now on the other side, it needs to come up a little bit. There's still not a whole lot from your plywood on that, but it's enough where your plywood will hit it and it will also cover um, the air gap that's going to be in there. If you just put plywood in there, you're going to have a big gap. To avoid the, having that gap from the plywood to your outside, that's what you're going to do right there. Double block it. Seventeen thirty eight and a quarter. Coming up. Kidding, man. I tore my fingerprints right off in that stuff. since we have the floors out we're able to give it something to sit on so it doesn't fall to the ground and then when we nail our plywood on top of that isn't going nowhere we don't want even though the yep one side to the other even though the underbelly is not in great shape we can at least hold up what we have going on until they can fix their underbelly yeah. this is basically a temporary fix i don't know if i made that long enough or not Good? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good right there. Perfect. Right over the top. Mm -hmm. Yep. Coming up. Paul, vapor barrier goes on the inside. I'll be done all of them this way, dude. Okay. Never mind, we don't. Because you made me turn it upside down. Oh. We, I thought we talked about that last job. We did? And I, and I took it out. <laughs> this is how we do our doorways because there's nothing there to nail to. Just don't screw into your wire. Right? <laughs> Some people call it a wire, not a wire. Wire. Screw into the wire, the wire. Sir, I'm gonna put one side by each or a two by six will work too, but we just don't have a two by six, so two by six will work just fine. I'm gonna put one, two more on top of it. Send it up on your doorway, put two more on top of that, screw them down, you got a solid doorway, one side to the next. Two more, 21.
it in there somewhere, though, isn't it? Mm mm. Insulate that. <laughs> That's so that he can have something to nail his plywood to. I'm sure everybody was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> People say, please translate what Paul just said. <laughs> I've been translating Paul for 30 years. I finally figured it out. Some of it. Not all of it. No, no, some of it. I still ask him. And sometimes I even ask him three times. Just, just saying. Huh? <laughs> that is beautiful, Miss Paul. Yeah. Beautifulness. I love them uh, star bits. They're they really got a good grip compared to uh, compared to uh, the regular Phillips bit. These are much better. Beautiful job. Thirteen three quarters. Thirteen. What'd you do that for, Paul? You gotta beat it up. Cause it's too low. Yeah. Pick it up. Yeah, that's yeah. what you did that for. Look at there. Now I can level it right up. Put a screw in it. Not that screw. Yeah, it went backwards. <clears throat> when I'm doing something like this, I like that. That's good for framing. It won't go through two, so you won't be going in penetrating the outside band. It makes it perfect. Uh, and that star bit right there comes with it. And it's a really a good gripper. You don't have to push real hard like you do with a Phillips bit. So mm -hmm. that's what I like. Two and a half and then inch and a half or maybe uh, inch five foot for the uh, screwing down the floor. We don't use a million staples. Wash right there on the top. Both sides. Put a screw in it. If you can't get it up, do like Paul did on the last one and pull it up with a screw. That'll work too. I'm missing some. Yeah. 13 and three quarters coming. Yeah, should be it, Okay. Pull more extension out. No, what? pull more extension out. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, back in. Yeah, back gotcha. in. Put that screw in to use it for leverage. It's not quite up where we need to be. To left it up some Paul, you can leave it up an inch. Plenty long screw, there you go. Good leverage, get it up. Let it come up, Paul. Yeah. One. Pull the other side up. It's just not yeah. not running. I'm not running flat. Because we only got one side here screwed and the other side. We can't. We can't get anything on the inside though. The floor joist is way over here. There's no way to get, there's a trunk line there. There's, 
all kinds of problems. So we have uh, decided to go this route, which he will uh, screw down into it, and that will still give us a wall. We're going to put one on top of that. We have a floor joist right there, so what we will do after we get this installed is put another block on top that we can screw the plywood into, and then from there to there, there'll be there'll be no problem. There won't be any issues uh, with the floor sagging. And that's what you don't want is a sagging floor in between your door joists or anywhere is in the corners. That's what the purpose of all this blocking that we're doing. Blocking is so important. 17. 17 inch block right on top. See, blocking is so important. Block your doorways, block around the outside walls. If you want to on the outside walls, you could probably lay them down like that. But what I'm trying to avoid is that crack right there and all the air being able to come out the outside of them walls. So um, put the blocking in. When you put your plywood down, it's going to make, it's going to close it off. And that's mainly what you want. That's why I do it that way. 17 inches coming up. Paul and I have been working together for a long time. So we kind of can bounce ideas off of each other. Um, all the time and you never know what situation you're going to come on uh on to in one of these mobile homes so um you know two two intelligent people that have done this for a long time can figure out pretty quick uh what needs to be done if it's made of wood you can fix it ever worked on one you know that's actually the reason why a lot of contractors just don't want to work on them because they're different and there's a lot more work involved with them and sometimes you don't know what you're going to get into so a little bit of experience is always going to be your best uh, best bet a little bit of experience get a couple guys over here that's done it before and knows carpentry work uh-oh we got a split how about that we got a split Four and a quarter, coming up. slide that way just a little bit to make a uh, vent line up so nice. yeah right through there we gotta we gotta get rid of that wood this somebody asked me what is this this pipe used to go through the roof at one point, I would guess, and would be vented through the roof, but it's a ventless, that's what they call that, ventless um, under the sink um, drain. So in other words, the water, the air is drawn in here so the sink will flush. Now, and they call it ventless and you can buy them at Home Depot or whatever. And as you can see how they're pretty easily Installed on the tee with a piece of pipe that has a screw type to it and screw it in You don't have to go through your roof to vent a pipe in the bathroom. You can eliminate it by making one of these right here Just above the drain Screws That's what I'm using right there 
that I use for the floor. You can see how that makes your doorway very strong. You don't want your plywood going up, of course it's not screwed yet, but you don't want your plywood or anything buckling up and down. You put a linoleum floor in this, it will crack. The linoleum will crack right there, wherever there's a buckle. Very important for it to be solid blocking around here. You don't want any buckling between plywood. Careful of that always. Blocking, blocking, blocking. Never enough blocking. Never, in my opinion. How about you, Paul? Never. Never. Never enough blocking. I'm going to put more in it. Yes, more than not enough. You don't want to come back to it later because you have to do it from under the house. Don't forget the trim on the outside of this wall. Guess yeah. it doesn't matter, does it? No, no matter. But I'm a, I, I can't go all the way my wire there. Yes, I know. There's a wire coming straight down through that wall, which there's a light switch on the other side. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> I'd love to have it go all the way across, but just can't do it. 44? Yep. By three and a half? Yep. <coughs> I mean, yeah, I probably could do it, Paul. That's what I'm talking about. That's a beautiful thing. Looks like it was supposed to be there, Paul. I like it. I like it. If you're working on your own house, you want to do the best job you can do. If somebody else is working on your house, you want them to do the best job that they can do. And hopefully they can do a good enough job to succeed and actually get the job done because sometimes you run into them people too. They go there with no freaking clue what they're doing. And you will not end up with what you want. Do not give them money before they start. <laughs> Lord have mercy, so many people make that freaking mistake. Amen. I mean, gosh. Oh, that is solid as bricks, buddy. It's a mobile home, solid as bricks at the doorway. You don't get that very often. There you go. Do the best job you can do, or the guys that's working for you need to do their best job, and if they can't, and they're not qualified, don't hire them. Make sure you know who you're hiring, and don't give that daggum advance money. If your carpenter can't do a four or three or four or five thousand dollar job, with no money down, then he's probably the wrong guy. Get the next guy. Maybe he costs a little bit more, but maybe there's a reason for that. I'm actually working uh, for tomorrow. I have a crew going over to a house in Bowling Springs where I live. Guess what happened? The lady got an estimate from me for $9,800. She got an estimate from somebody else for um, the person that got the, gave her the estimate for $7,000 wanted 50% up front. And before they finished the job, for some reason or another, they wanted the rest of the money. She gave it to them. Guess what? They didn't come back the next day. What's on the roof, Paul? There's nothing. No. Nail gun and, and, and two sho shovels. Yeah, they left a nail gun and two shovels on the roof. $4,500. Yeah. Oh. My. God. So anyway, so I called my guys back and of course now she's going to pay a couple thousand dollars more um, than what I originally quoted to finish the roof. So nah, that just gives you an idea what could happen if you hire the wrong person. Pay attention to who you're hiring to start with. A lot of times I hear stories where people hire somebody, they don't finish the job and they gave them money. Well, that gets Drew, his price was so amazing. I couldn't believe it. That's why you ended up where you are now. But did he actually come back and finish the job? People have been suckered into paying a contractor money down and he didn't show up. 
But Drew, we signed a contract. He has to do the job. And even if you sign a contract, you're going to go round and round and round. And when it's all said and done, you're still going to be going around. And I'll tell you why. Because the guy didn't even have enough money to buy your material. Therefore, how's he going to have enough money to pay you back when you take him to court? So good luck with that. Makes it look easy. It's called experience. Not easy being cheesy. Not easy being cheesy. <laughs> and he is cheesy. for your toilet flange you want to be super tight you do not want to have the wrong measurements you need to be from the wall to the center right at about 13, 13 and a half, half. Yeah, show them that measurement Paul. Yeah. Um, toilets have a specific measurement from the wall to the center it's 13, 13 inches 13 inches yeah 13 inches to the center that gives your bowl enough room to be uh, not banging up against the wall oh drain piping pole is just drain piping Disgusting. Oh, disgusting. Was there something on that edge that keeping it from going down? No, it's down. Huh? Same size wood? No. It's the same. Same size. Okay. It's the same size. They got a different size out there. Oh, oh, we didn't measure what was in here. Is that five eighths? Pop. That's what it looks like, ain't it? That's garbage. That was five eighths. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've got no issue of nothing. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that something? So that Luan is going to take care of that little yeah. issue. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Isn't that something? So they have. So this mobile home floor originally, oh my lord, was five eighths. Garbage board. Whatever they call that crap. Garbage. My word. Down to the point where it's just not even an eighth. Yeah. It's not even an eighth of an inch. Yeah. So this piece of Luan that they run on the floor, we're going to run it back in the hallway, but we are not going to put it back in the bathroom the or the bedroom. Um, they don't need it with this stuff. You know? uh, that's for sure. So no sense spending the money to put it down. They'll have a transition here wherever the floor transitions from the bathroom to the hallway and they'll have a transition here where it transitions from the bedroom to the hallway so, even though this will be it's almost a quarter inch a little light on a quarter maybe three sixteenths of an inch a transition right here in the middle of the doorway will take care of that and then we'll so the carpet that's in the hallway is coming back Eventually, I imagine they'll change it. Right now, it's coming back. Right now, it is going to just be laid back for now. They can do whatever they want to, but it's it's not in good shape because it's been wet. 